All right, everybody. Assalamu alaikum. So uh, today I have a guest uh, also named Jan. So this Jan yeah. is... Uh, I'm not gonna should I mention your last name because that's the name of your channel, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. So your if name you is Jan Richkowski. It's a yeah, Polish Richkowski. name, but you're British, right? So that's how I understand it. Uh yeah, yeah. Well, well, my parents are Polish, but I've lived in England all my life. So I'm basically basically British. Yeah. So you're British with Polish background, let's say. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you you have a YouTube channel and uh, I've seen one of your videos. It's kind of, I think, recent. I don't usually do much interviews with, uh, I know there's plenty of uh, channels who like talk to, to new reverts and stuff, but uh, uh, the way you explain some stuff and uh, your editing was really good. So I just wanted to discuss yeah, with you a few things. Um, maybe... I mean, how old are you? If if that's not a uh, a secret, um, in four days I'll be sixteen. So right now I'm fifteen. That's crazy. Yeah. So you've yeah. Uh, you've reverted to Islam, right? Uh, before. So how long ago? Yeah. So <clears throat> it's it's kind of complicated because I knew about Islam and I was Muslim two years ago, but I officially did the Shahada like just after Ramadan this year. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started to actually properly fully learn about Islam and fully pray and practice it and all that. Actually, you're twice as young as me. Maybe you wouldn't say, but I'm 32. You're you're going to be 16. So you can be actually my son. And I have a son, actually. So it's insane. Oh, really? uh, yeah, that uh, yeah, it's kind of strange because I sometimes have people in Slovakia that message me who are like 13, 14, and they want to like become Muslim. I'm like, forget it. Like you can't like you live with parents like uh, and uh, they want to throw them out, you know, and stuff. There's so much problems. I mean, they can become secret Muslims, but never declare it because it's just such a mess. So how is it possible for you? Because you still have to live with your parents. You still have to go to school. You know, like for me, it was easy yeah. because I'm a grown up. But and I did also two years ago. But for you, it's like uh, you're completely in a different situation. You're basically you were a kid at right, 13. You were a child. So, well, so uh... how, how is that? So it's a bit easier for me because I live in England and England's a lot. Uh, if I did this in Poland, I went to a public Polish school and all the teachers knew and my Polish Polish family knew, then it would be a really big issue because everyone's Islamophobic in Poland, basically. But uh, in England, it's more fine. You know, it's the same as like. Just for the sake of the argument, if I said I'm gay, that would be a lot more acceptable because it's just more liberal yeah. here. So. So what I'm saying is like, uh, it's a lot easier here. And my mom, I live with just my mom uh, mm -hmm. and my grandma, right? My mom's completely cool with it because she's just really nice. She's completely cool with like Islam, Judaism, everything. Uh, but my grandma is Islamophobic. So she's a bit of an issue, but it's like, it's not bad. So yeah, my sisters are cool with it. Um, and then when I go to Poland, sometimes uh, my dad's like kind of skeptical about it. Uh, my family in Poland are like, they're like, you know, they they know about it and they're cool with it. Like they accept it. But it's like they uh, I feel like they kind of criticize me inside and they do kind of uh, talk smack about me. <laughs> but it's it's really not a big issue because I I'm not a kind of person that cares what people think about me, you know. Yeah, they probably see it as a puberty phase, which I would see it as a as a parent. Like he's just going through yeah. some phase for a few months, let him be, and then he'll grow up. <laughs> yeah, when I was 13 and I first told like my mom and my uncle about it, they just thought like um my mom was just like, What are you doing, bro? You're weird. And then my uncle was like, Yeah, just give it a year and it'll be over. And my dad thought the same. But now I'm like fully doubling down on it. They, they see that I'm praying. They see I, I've got two Qurans. And they're like, yeah, he's being serious about it. But by by now, they've uh, really gotten used to it. So it's really not like a big difference now. Yeah, I wanted to ask you because uh, you, you don't seem like 15, 16, uh, maybe 17. I don't know, just from a camera. But maybe live you would be younger. I don't know. But uh, it's, so... it's the mustache, bro. Trust me. Probably, yeah. Uh, so how would the... 
because the your most of the young youtubers are so super very superficial and even if they talk they don't really talk about uh, like the self improvement yeah sometimes it's important but uh, you have a video that kind of blew up about it but you just uh, focused on the islamic kind of paradigm which i of course every muslim knows that this is the truth but i haven't seen it expressed um, by anyone that like hey forget these influencers why are we following them and it's coming from someone like you it's completely like weird because you yourself are, are revered but you're so young and you can understand it and and there are reverts online that don't kind of talk about this they they still have this red pill mindset how did you get into this whole so like maybe in the beginning i will ask uh your background i guess you were christian because from poland parents right so uh at least cultural Christian or something like this. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I was Christian. I was dragged into church. I just, you know, looked around there, didn't really care. And then when I got, when I had a choice, I became atheist because uh, before I got into Islam and all that, I, I saw myself as this like little intellectual kid. I thought I'm so smart. God doesn't exist things like that but then but then i found islam but yeah before i was just atheist basically mm -hmm. so how was Definitely. that oh uh, so i have similar I'm, i guess everybody goes like that like uh, from christianity to atheism but how did you come across islam i guess in the uk it's more prevalent but still it's outside of your culture outside of your nationality uh it's not something like british people accept generally uh, so why yeah. would you, how did you come across it or what made you interested in Islam? So it's, it's actually a really weird story. So when I was in like um, primary school, so like when I was like between eight and 10, I learned about Islam at school and then that was just like, okay. And that kind of normalized it a little bit because I was like, okay, Muslims exist and they're fine, you know, because they just taught us equality and all that. But then um, when I was like 12, I'd say, 11 and 12, uh, I like these memes on Instagram and on YouTube and that called Arab funny. Do you know what that is? No, I'm too old. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's really weird. Some people might know, but uh, it's like these memes that are like um, satirical and it's like uh, of Arabs and that, but... I know it's really weird, but um, I saw that on Instagram and then I followed hashtag Allahu Akbar because I thought it would have memes, right? Mm -hmm. And then I saw that it had real Islamic stuff, but I didn't unfollow it. So I saw these Islamic posts that were like spreading real things about Islam and then I left it there and then I just kind of kept it there and that kind of opened my eyes to Islam. And then from that, I started to learn more about it. I started to realize that God must exist and then I saw all these Islamic things so eventually as I learned more I realized yeah Islam is the truth uh, and yeah that's basically how I found Islam but I think this is it's like a blessing um, from Allah I think like these coincidences that added together and they kind of formed something in my mind to make me like Islam out of nowhere but um, but yeah that's basically how I found Islam. And that was when you were 13, right? Or Yeah. So what changed since then until, like you've mentioned this Ramadan, you've uh, actually like uh, doubled down on it. So what, where were you before? Like, and now what's, what's changed or where are you in your kind of journey? Are you praying or are you, have you fasted in Ramadan? Like what's, what happened? Yeah. So uh, I think, I first converted when I was 13 and that was like, I think during or just after Ramadan of like 2021 or something. Um, but yeah, I didn't fast of course, cause I didn't even know Ramadan existed but, uh, cause I didn't know much about Islam, but I started learning about Islam and then I got on self-improvement. I, I only knew a little bit of, about Islam, but then as I started improving myself, I also started to learn more about Islam because that was that's like part of self-improvement you know learning when i was 13 i was like doing lots of haram things you know uh with my friends and then 
when I found self-improvement, I stopped doing these things and I started following Islam more. And then I realized that Islam is really good for my life. And then fast forward to uh, my first Ramadan. I just I just fasted, did that right. Uh, but I was still not fully practicing. Like I didn't know how to pray. I just fasted. And um, a few times a day I'd make dua because I didn't know how to do the actual prayer. I just knew to face uh, the Qibla. Qibla, I think that's what it's called. And, uh, you know, just say stuff towards it. That's what I thought prayer was. But then this Ramadan, I did it fully. And then I did the Shahada. The Imam gave me like a book here that taught me like a lot of stuff about Islam, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, how to pray. Here it tells me when the prayers are and when the Sunnah prayers are and that. And then here is the actual like tutorial for praying, mm. basically. So I started following this, started learning more and more about Islam, started reading the Quran because my neighbor, who's Muslim, uh, gave me one. And now I'm just, I'd say I'm a practicing Muslim. I'm still learning a lot, but I think I, like not to toot my own horn, but I think I'm more practicing than a lot of, uh, a lot of Muslims yeah so you've uh, actually went to the mosque and the speak to the sheikh or do yeah. you go or do you have some mosque around you where you go like once a week or i live in a place with actually a lot of muslims so there's a mosque like 15 minutes away from me so i just go there on friday um and yeah one day uh, i think it was like my third week there i went to the imam and i was like yo uh I'm new in Islam and I've not done the Shahada yet. So he just asked me a few questions and then I did the Shahada. Mm -hmm. So do you feel kind of strange when you go? Because I go to a masjid and I'm usually the only kind of like, not white person, but let's say European. How is it in the UK? Like, because I've been to London, in East London, and it was the same. So I don't know. Have you met other reverts or is it still um... you're kind of a lone, lone wolf? <laughs> So, yeah, when I first started going, I felt really, really weird, especially because I didn't know how to pray properly. I was just learning with that mm -hmm. book. Uh, so, yeah, I felt really weird there and I felt like people were looking at me. But then a few weeks later, I kind of just felt like a regular there because I was just because I was there for a few weeks. And there's only like, I think, like four of the reverts there. I've not spoken to any of them. So do you some have you been to any Muslim country or? No, never. Yeah. Would you, uh, because I guess in your age, you have to go with your parents, right? So do you go sometimes on some vacations or some, some stuff like that? Or is it mostly you hang out in the UK? Yeah, most of my time is spent in the UK. I do go Poland sometimes by plane. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, I'm actually going in in four days. I'm going Poland and then I'm going, uh, I think it's Hungary and then Croatia by car. Yes. But it's I've never been close to my, to my um, Hungary, Croatia is where um, Slovakia is between, you know, Poland and Hungary. Yeah, I think we're, we're going to be driving through Slovakia. So yeah. that'd be. Yeah, if you yeah, stop by, uh, I've built a masjid. It's kind of a small because like we don't have any. <laughs> so uh... you built your masjid like on your own. Yeah, well, like I did a fundraiser mind. from YouTube and then we rented uh, oh. a place and it's been a couple of months and now it's bigger and we have some community. So. Uh, we have completely different challenges, but uh, I'm also in a completely different position than you. So it's like uh, Allah puts in place things, you know, because, you know, this is the most Islamophobic country here. So we, we have like overall three mosques in the entire country and they are not even mosques. They are like prayer rooms. So it's impossible to be. Uh, practicing Islam because with time you'll learn. I mean, I've been a Muslim only almost three years so a bit longer but um what happens is you need to be part of the community and islamic community is important but also your own community so maybe other british reverts and stuff so that's like uh, as you grow up is going to be more and more important because you'll feel alone and uh you know it's a decision for life so um you know i'm uh, you, you'll have to live a long life and it's good to be part of something uh, that you're building, you know. So 
uh, it's just uh, necessary yeah. uh, in the beginning the first two years i didn't really have this feeling like but now i moved back here and uh, i want to do something for the community and uh, uh, you have same challenges like if we if we meet the reverts we all go through the same thing the born muslims don't understand you know so that's the advantage uh, I, I guess you're still a young but once you well, let's say you'll be 20 or something uh, you'll be on your own it's going to be more difficult you know uh, you'll be you need to have these support people because islam is like in real life uh, now there's many like youtube uh, learning and uh, you know googling different things and it's fine because probably you would never become a muslim without instagram like uh, let's say 100 years ago you wouldn't be a muslim probably you would yeah. you wouldn't be exposed to it so that's good about the inter internet that it gives us this because i became a muslim from youtube as well but the second thing is like you have no knowledge i have no knowledge like there are people who study 50 years Islam and they are scared to speak on the topic because they they might misrepresent something. And sometimes we speak, you know, we, we don't really have a lot of, first of all, we don't even know Arabic. So by definition, we don't even know the Quran. We just know the interpretation. There are so many layers that we need to go through, you know. So I'm now very careful that I know I'm still in the beginning phase. You know, as you learn to practice, then the next phase is like, I need to kind of increase my understanding because, you know, and you have time, you know, but still it's like, uh, there's so much to learn. So do you think it's, do you think it's like in a way bad that I make these videos that are educational, but I've not like learned enough for it to be fully factual or. No, I think it's fine because I also made videos about Islam. It's just, I wouldn't dabble into the topics because your videos are kind of like, um, you know the basic knowledge of islam which uh, is not it's there's no issue but if you would let's say pick like akida is a belief right uh, like your belief and there islam like there there's many ways to look at akida and you can have problems because some people uh maybe you know some people call some other people non-muslim and they are muslim you know and there, there's a problem, like, how do you view Akid? So these topics are not for us, because this is something you would so have you to memorize like, oh. hadith, you would have to know the Quran. And uh, so I would stay out of, like, um, Islamic scholarly debate topics, because you cannot speak about them, because you don't even know what's going on, probably. Um, but the basic yeah. knowledge, like, there's only one God, you know, the Prophet Muhammad uh, uh, is the final messenger. All this is, like, it's not... Uh, sort of uh something that you can't talk about of course you can it's just the the other issues are a bit more problematic but i think especially coming from you it's it's great you know so yeah no problem. okay all right that's fine then but uh again don't listen to me i'm just nobody uh you should go to the to the person on uh, uh in the masjid probably and stuff mm -hmm. but um uh, so what's uh i watched your videos and you have this kind of great editing uh how did you learn to edit this much because it's like uh, really amazing i i never edit my videos i just edit like superficial and you have like really professional way of editing i would actually pay you to do my videos or you could like <laughs> make a living of this really so yeah, how humble. did you go about okay. learning this well um well i used to do uh gaming videos actually hmm like a, a year or two ago i have this other channel and i've made gaming videos on there but honestly um it's really just doing it trying it so let's say in my mind i want to make an effect of something zooming in zooming in quickly and i have no mm -hmm. idea how to do it i just go on youtube look at a tutorial and then i can do it and then yeah. tediously every single effect that i have in my mind i can just put it into the video editing software by, uh, you know, searching for a tutorial on YouTube. But it's really just practice and sitting down and just actually doing it. Because a lot of people don't have good editing because they don't try to, because they, they have the belief, I'm bad at editing, I can't edit it, to, uh, I'm going to pay someone else, so I'll just do a few little cuts, but I won't edit much. But yeah, so that's what holds most people back. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know because everything is online. So you can just, uh, even if I wanted to zoom, like zoom, DaVinci, Resolve, and somebody made it and I can just 
look at it and do the same thing yeah. so it's just the time like the effort it takes for one video to make to to be made in like in your format it takes a lot because i know just my really superficial edits and this stuff takes like so much time <laughs> so i guess it's more about how much time do you have like uh maybe right now you have a time so that's great because you can like really master it but I can't imagine yeah. watching hours of hours of things on on editing. Well, I can just pay someone to do it because I have a I can do that, and it's more more easier for me. But it's great. I think uh, that style of videos is missing. And um, yeah, mashallah. I did, yeah, I didn't notice that. So I think I've got a bit of an advantage because I'm 15. Yeah, I'm in school, so my t I've got so much time because I don't need to work. I don't need to. Mm -hmm. If I I mean, like, I don't, if I didn't want to, I wouldn't really need to learn or revise because I can just do this and it's not that important at my age. So I've got an advantage of just having a lot more time. And uh, yeah, I did notice that when I searched Islamic self-improvement or when I watched Islamic videos on YouTube, just in general, nobody has the editing I, that I do. And mm -hmm it seems like nobody scripts and writes their videos like I do. So I just thought, okay, this is easy. I'll just hop in that boat and then I could, inshallah, I could have success. Well, there are some channels who do it, but they are non-Muslim. So the non-Muslim channels, yeah. they have similar style, but none of them like are like Muslim, like actual Muslim. Yeah. Maybe some reaction videos and stuff, but your content is actually like original. So it's not just a reaction video, which is easy to make, but it's more like, uh, you know, your thoughts mixed with whatever, something yeah. else. And that's more difficult because you have to like think about what you're going to make. I know this. So it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's great because I think uh, I have subscribers just because it's, uh, just because like sometimes it's interesting what I say, but the, the editing is horrible. Like, uh, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's not something I, I enjoy. And uh, I think you have, a, man, if I was you, I would be already making money with this. Like I would, because I have a digital marketing company. So I would start video editing professionally for other YouTubers or brands. And you can really make, like you can teach somebody the same skill you have and make like a big company from this. Like uh, it's a great thing. Yeah, I heard yeah, many people would pay for this. Like I would pay for this as well. So it's great. I have a different um, vision because I don't want to work for somebody. I know that mm -hmm. I could either make like a few hundred a video at most by editing for somebody, somebody else. But if I grind these videos out for a year, then I could be making like 10 times that just from like uh, courses maybe like channel members and just all of that. So I've got a different vision than someone else paying me to work for them because I could just sell like courses or things like that to people, you know? That's one thing, but you can, uh, you're thinking of teaching people uh, or doing it for maybe people, but uh, there are brands like big brands who could pay you maybe $100,000 for this, you know? What, That's what, what I'm saying. Yeah. And uh, that's that's not like uh, regular people. So I'm more talking about big companies. They're looking for this right now. Um, and it could be really interesting to build an agency from it. But I'm pitching you different, like, I don't want to confuse you, but because that's kind I of where I am. I'm in, a, I'm in a business world. So yeah, you can build a course and have people, but you always need the traffic. You, you depend on YouTube. YouTube can shadow ban you. There's many things, but if you own your company and you employ other people to edit, Plus, you can actually close big contracts. Like, imagine these contracts with huge companies. Like, they can, like, actually, this is like Hustlers University. This is real stuff, not uh, like s selling like uh, $500, you know, things. So, but, anyways, I don't want to talk about this because this is too much dunya. <laughs> uh, but uh, I wanted to ask you so, are you sometimes, wh what are you learning right now in Islam, or where do you? want to go besides the videos and and uh, maybe kind of like a dawah that you're doing which is great uh, what about yourself where do you want to move because i felt some stagnation like after i reach a level in practicing there's this like stagnation for a few months because you don't know what to do next because everything seems so huge like i can't learn arabic because it's like a giant task so where do you so, want to go next 
Um, I guess I'm mainly focusing on. Um, I don't know if this is what you're asking, but I'm reading the Quran, and I'm gonna, when I get from one end of the Quran to the other, I'll just keep reading and cycling through it, just because I want to read it every day. So I'm I'm gonna be learning about the Quran, and uh, I want to make some more Muslim friends. Uh, mm -hmm. But in terms of like learning about Islam, there's not really one thing that I'm thinking of because for my videos, my videos is just me learning and then me teaching. So it happens automatically just from me making these videos. I just learn about Islam mm -hmm. just from because I will never, ever make a video with just I just get a piece of paper and I start writing. I I have to do hours of research first. So I actually give the most authentic like information, you know, mm -hmm. so that. So I don't need to go out of my, my way to learn just for myself because I learn for these videos and then for myself as a as well, you know. How do you look at now these because you've made a video about stoicism, I think, then on this self-improvement Andrew Tate. How do yeah. you look at these like non-Islamic trends like this, let's say um uh, these trends on uh, that people follow but they are kind of like scared to embrace not religion but i would call islam like a way of life it's not really comparable to christianity but okay let's call it the religion how why do you think people don't like to dive deep into this like islamic topic sometimes and they they focus more on these like self-improvement stuff which in an yeah it's like a dead end because i used to do the same thing and uh there's no purpose behind it it's just kind of uh yeah, it's... a circle yeah there's a there's a few reasons probably there's um people just not knowing or people having some kind of mental block so they're like they hear about islam or religion and they're like oh yeah i'm an atheist i don't i don't need to learn about this blah 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 um and they're like yeah i'm fine with self-improvement because they have this delusion that self-improvement is good enough and that because a lot of these people like they aren't actually fulfilled but they, they're like oh yeah soon i'll be fulfilled but then they so they just ignore islam because they just do these self-improvement things instead and part of it is okay i see islam but i don't feel like praying five times a day and fasting and not drinking alcohol and this and that this and that so they just kind of i think that people just are lazy and they just don't feel like following rules you know one of my friends said why should i live by a set of rules like it's uh so a lot of people are just ignorant you know yeah what made you switch from being atheist to actually thinking or being convinced that there's like a creator or some force or something like this do you remember honestly uh honestly i don't remember because two years ago I was <clears throat> doing a substance and uh, so that made my memory really bad, but I don't remember. I just, I just, as far as I can remember, I just believe in Islam, you know? I don't know why Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, just put it in my head. That's what I think. Hmm. Uh, nice. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's always different for somebody else and, uh, for me, it was more these like uh, con cosmological arguments and stuff like that. And then I slowly incorporated other things and uh, started praying. But it, it took like two or three years to just embrace Islam because it's such a big, uh, big journey, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, it took me like two years to fully start embracing it. So you became <laughs> became interested at the 11 or what? Or was no, it... no, I mean, um, at 13, I was like yeah. interested in it. But a few months ago, when I took the Shahada, I fully started to like fully, fully embrace it and fully mm -hmm. start practicing it. But like, I did believe in it, but I just didn't practice it fully, you know? Yeah. It's so insane because I've heard many cases of like 13 year old uh, boys, usually on Discord and Instagram or TikTok, becoming Muslims and doing Shahadas online. I mean, on one hand, I'm happy, but I'm, on the other, I'm like, how? are you going to stay Muslim? Like, this is going to be very difficult, you know, because you're like online and this religion is not online. This is in real life. Like you need to be part of a community. And 
you know, your society is against you, your family may be not understanding. There's so many, like, as a young boy, there must be even more pressure, you know? So, subhanAllah, sometimes I'm like, um, yeah, you, you're you like much on a much higher rank than me, for example, because I had it much easier even because I was just a uh, grown up, but I can't imagine being like this, you know, and you don't have problems, as you've mentioned, just the grandma maybe is not happy, but uh, that's yeah. fine. I mean, my grandma's not when happy. When I first reverted, people at school were really confused <laughs> and my friends were confused because I was like the complete opposite of a Muslim, you yeah. know? Um, so they thought, like, for a year, a lot of people at school thought that I was just uh, lying and joking. But then they started realizing that's the truth. But I think, like, not to toot my own horn again, but I think I'm just kind of resilient, you know, because I did experience some Islamophobia from people that used to be my friends. But I'm just kind of, like, uncaring of uh, people that hate me, you know? So like, what... I don't... Sorry, what, what were you saying? No, that's... Yeah, I said um, I don't really care about the opinions of people that hate me or hate on me. Mm -hmm. So what made you start YouTube? Like, uh, I think it's fairly recent, right? So this channel, let's say. Yeah, I think it's... Um, let me see. My first video was uploaded, like, about two months ago. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it's because... Um, for a few months before I made my first video, I kind of, th I had this m thought in my mind, like, what if I make an Islamic self-improvement channel, you know, because I never see anyone doing that. And then one day I watched a video, do you know who Hamza is? Hamza. Yeah. I watched a video by Hamza saying something like, this is how you can make 10k a month. And I was like, okay, that seems nice. And then he was talking about going on about making a YouTube channel for two years. So I just, learn about it. I learned, okay, how can I do this YouTube thing? And then I just started making random videos. So my first four videos are actually not related to Islam at all. Mm -hmm. They're just, cause I was given the tip to just make videos just to see if you're, you're cool with it. Um, but then I kind of realized, yeah, there's no good Islamic self-improvement channel. So I just kind of filled that gap in the market. Yeah, it's funny this YouTube uh, because sometimes, yeah, you watch some people and I also started my channel just randomly and then one video got like 700,000 views. I was like, what's this? Wow. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then I used to then have interviews with people who I used to watch before. And yeah, so it's kind of like, uh, it's just if you decide to do YouTube, you have to have some personality for it and whatever, but it's yeah. like there's a there's a process for it. Like it's not a, a random that these people end up with uh, whatever amount of I don't know yeah. subscribers. I don't really think subscribers got, uh... are important, but uh, it's more about other metrics. But I I still do YouTube just for fun. Uh, I mean, there's some like Patreons I have and some paid ads, but uh, it's not my main income because as I've mentioned, I have a, a companies that I'm running, so this is just for fun for me. But uh, it's yeah. good because YouTube actually funded our masjid, so. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, well, Alhamdulillah, bro. But uh, I got really lucky with my YouTube channel because most people don't get um, 6,000 subscribers in two months. So I got, I was blessed uh, mm -hmm. a lot. Most people would take like six months to get that. But um, well, it's your editing is really great. And then uh, yeah. just the way you look, it's that also like a white guy with blonde hair talking about Islam. Like, what is this? Yeah. You know? it's kind of strange <laughs> so it's yeah. automatic automatic algorithm like uh the this is gonna work you know in the muslim community <laughs> yeah yeah so that's great well good uh, good luck with everything i mean uh, jan uh, do you are you called jan or what do they call you yeah jan. Jan. jan really not john no nice no i don't like it with a j i like it with a y but that's how you say it in poland yeah it's the same here Jan so um uh, good luck with everything you're doing I'm sure you're gonna be like a uh, hundred thousand subscribers very soon like I already know this oh, thank you and then you. million and 10 million and Mr Beast <laughs> but uh I'll, I'll yeah. remember you when I'm a bajillion now bro don't worry about it just just mention me like go subscribe to this <laughs> loser <laughs> but um uh, 
anyways i'm sure that's gonna happen because it's just if you keep doing this same thing and you keep releasing the same type of videos and it's gonna be slightly islamic it's just gonna work because there's no one else doing it uh with your kind of like background so uh, just keep doing it and then uh, don't forget to also learn about Islam because that's never over. Okay. I think uh, like what I knew three years ago, I thought I know about Islam and I was making Islamic videos about like purpose of life and stuff. And now I look back at it like, man, I'm cringing. Like I didn't know nothing, <laughs> but I'm, yeah. that's kind I'll of like how it works. Same thing. Yeah. That's normal. So, well, uh, thank you for doing this. And then uh, where should people go if they want to check out your videos and kind of follow what you what you have because i'll have a link to your channel probably down below okay. is there anywhere else they should they should go or... don't forget it i need those 20k subs bro 20k okay well guys go subscribe to jan uh at least like a thousand and then at least you got something from us uh and i'm sure I'm, i'll see you on the on some other muslim channels uh talking about uh your yeah. journey so uh let's stay in touch and maybe we can catch up next year just to see where yeah, you are of course and if you ever come to Slovakia or whatever, just uh, email me. Yeah, and... I'll actually have a look. Um, I'll if you have any other contact information like WhatsApp, I could text you on there. But I'll have a look. Um, when I'm in, because I'll be on in Slovakia on the way to um Hungary. Yeah. So I'll you'll you know actually probably have to go through my city. There's no other way to go to Hungary. Uh, so maybe, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh, what's the city called? Uh. I don't Is know if you can medium? spell it. It's called Banska Bistrica. <laughs> so I would have to email you. Banska that. Bistrica. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even I can't say. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's two name city. So yeah, it's not the capital, but uh, yeah. If you go through, I have a we can uh, I can show you the mosque or whatever. But you will be with your parents, I guess, right? Uh, yeah, I will be. So we'll just I'll see if that's like possible if in any way, but it probably. Probably won't be, but you know, we'll see. Inshallah. Let's see. We got some kebab. We can uh, eat some kebab or whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, bro. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jan. Uh, just like luck here, and uh, may Allah keep you uh, strong, strong and steadfast on the deen. And uh, this is the most important thing in life. So uh, it's just uh, realizing, you know, this yeah. world is kind of like a you know, simulation. It's an illusion, and just focus on the real uh real life and then you'll be fine yeah dude you too bro i'll uh so i'll see you i'll uh see you next year maybe or see you whenever bro yeah inshallah um, all yeah, right bless you. thank you again and uh let's see uh, let's keep in touch assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum bro